What's up guys? So hopefully in this video you'll be learning how to stop procrastinating. I think it's a huge issue right now. Most people tend to procrastinate, whether that is trying to mow the lawn, write an article, go to the gym, walk, read a little bit more, whatever it may be, but it's a big disease right now and hopefully in this video uh, you'll learn how to overcome that. So how I'm gonna be focusing on teaching you how to overcome procrastination is focusing on three simple steps. Step one is understanding what you're procrastinating over with and breaking that down. Step two is controlling your environment. So for example, the room that you work in or you read in. And step three, certain tactics. So like apps that you use, chunking time, etc. So moving along, step one. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using uh, blogging as an example. So most people procrastinate, or, or writing in general, most people procrastinate over writing. So step one is understanding what you're procrastinating over. Most people, when they view a problem, they view the problem as a whole. For example, I need to write a 2,000 word essay, and then you're analyzing it, and then you get the symptom, you know, paralysis by analysis. It's too much for you to uh, digest that whole 2,000 word blog or essay a uh, one shot. So what you need to do with any problem that you're procrastinating or solution that you're procrastinating over with is you need to break it apart. Gary Keller talks about it in his book, The One Thing, is like, once you break apart a problem into its simplest form, that's when you can actually begin tackling the problem. So for example, in our case, we wanna write a 2,000 word blog, and for most, it's too much. So what you need to do is, instead of viewing this as a 2,000 word blog, I think you need to view this as three separate pieces of a blog. So any given written article, you know there's what? There's an intro, right? There's the body. And then there's the conclusion, right? Or outro. So those are three significant separate pieces of a 2,000 word blog. So we can even break this down into further segments. So within the intro, Let's break down what each paragraph, let's say for the sake of this video, there's two paragraphs or two to three paragraphs per section. Let's break down the intro into two to three paragraphs so we know what's gonna be about. So if we go down over here, you guys can see that, yeah. Intro, what's the intro gonna be? Maybe the first paragraph is uh, you're talking about the item and the second paragraph is you're talking about more in details of the item. I'm not too sure, I'm just sake of the conversation, right? So now you've broken this down, and you wanna go through every single section, breaking down what each paragraph is. So now what you have is you have two to three sections broken down into the category of your blog on every single section of your blog. So this will move on into part two or step two because now you've distilled the problem into actually actionable steps. Well, not steps yet, but now you can plug these things or plug these um, action steps into your plan. So, step two. For, so for step two, we know we have our intro, and we know we have two to three sections of the intro planned out. We know we have that for the body, and we know we have that for the conclusion. All right, conclusion, all of them two to three. Now in step two, what's really important is your environment. You gotta understand how your body is wired and how your body functions. Everybody's different. You know, for example, with me, I like working in a quiet space. I don't like noise. I'll put earplugs on. I'll use certain tools of the trade. And I like to have maybe some, uh, I don't know, ginger tea or turmeric tea, that I like, sometimes coffee. It, it depends what kind of mood I'm in. But I know my environment. Most people, they try to go against the grain or upstream, and it's impossible. Like if you have noisy coworkers around you or if your family's bugging you, that's never gonna fly. As Joseph Campbell talks about that in uh, you know, Following Your Bliss is, what is your quiet space? What is that space you can go to that no one bugs you for two, three hours? That's your sanctuary that you can get work done in there. So it's really important that you control your environment. Go to the coffee shop that you love. Uh, find, you know, build a room, build your like, you know, man cave or woman cave inside your house. Uh, may, maybe when you're working at a co-working space or you're working in your office, find uh, an empty office or find something in that building that no one can bother you. It's of utmost importance that you control the environment that you're in with. There's certain cool studies too showing that scent, 
scent plays a role in, uh, in paying attention and concentration. Uh, also flowers and pictures. So play around with transforming your environment to become the trigger so you can concentrate better. So step two is, is that, okay? Step three. Now we have the blog broken down into sections and within those sections we have more action steps. Now you have a place that you can get your work done, your, your sanctuary, that room that no one can bug you in. Now step three is combining everything together into a well-formulated plan. Now these are a couple of things I wanna talk about over here. I wanna talk about chunking. Chunking, I wanna talk about distractions. I wanna talk about don't break the chain. Don't break the chain, okay? So the first thing is chunking. Your brain doesn't like to deviate from task to task, meaning it doesn't like to go from email to calling somebody to writing a blog. It likes to stay on one task because you have something called, well, I call it ADD residual, meaning when you move from an item to item or task to task, there is a residual of that of that task into the next task. And science has proven it. It takes 20 minutes for an individual to get into a certain task. So imagine if you're breaking this up constantly, you actually never get into the flow, into the rhythm of things, okay? So it's really, really important that you chunk something. So what I mean by chunking, let's bring it back to the blog, is in your calendar or your time slot, you wanna chunk, I usually chunk in three hour sections. So three hours you block off what you wanna do, then within those three hours, the only thing that you're focusing on is that one thing. So for example, we had the intro with, the two, with two to three paragraphs, and we had the details of what each paragraph is. Within the actual chunking, what I'm doing is this. A, I don't have any distraction, my phone is off. Uh, if you need to use a computer for writing, I recommend using certain apps such as Antisocial, uh, also Rescue Time. So Rescue Time actually shows you how much time you're spending on social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and all other different websites, and kind of gives you a general idea of like how much, how much time you're actually wasting on a day-to-day -day basis. But pretty much what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're not goofing off and going on doing something else. It's really imperative that you get into the flow, you have, you have that safe, your sanctuary that no one can bug you in, and you get to work right there. So chunking is really important. I'm a big believer in a three-hour chunk. So three hour chunk, and within the three hours, I take breaks every hour. I move around for a couple of minutes and I go back to work, okay? So let's recap this. And I didn't wanna make this video long, kinda of keep it under 15 minutes as much as possible. Number one is really understanding what you're dealing with, the problem, why you're procrastinating over with, and breaking it down as much as you can. Break it down into the most finite detail as possible because that small first action step is very easy to do. And what Jerry Seinfeld talks about in Don't Break the Chain is you can literally do one small thing day after day in your chunking period to accomplish this. And how Jerry Seinfeld does it in Don't Break the Chain is like if he misses a day, the chain is broken, then you have to start all over again, okay? Um, Stephen Pressfield, amazing author, he talks about procrastination becomes habits. If you keep on procrastinating over whatever you're procrastinating over with, it will become a very, very bad habit. And we know what habits are very hard to break. So if you have this habit of procrastinating over and over and over again, it's like, it's like you're digging yourself a grave and it's gonna be really, really hard to get out of the hole. So to recap everything uh, one more time, step one, break everything apart into very minute tasks to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Step two is control your environment, control the rooms that you're, you're trying to get the work done in. And step three is use appropriate tactics such as chunking, uh, make sure there's no distractions, use apps like antisocial to block all your social media, put your phone off, and make sure no one's bothering you. So I'll leave you with some resources, two books I think you should read. Uh, book one is The One Thing by Gary Keller, and book two is by David Allen, The Infamous, Get Stuff Done. Okay guys, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, the button somewhere here, and uh, leave a comment below this video. I wanna know uh, what's your thoughts on procrastination, and also, what other future videos would you like me to do? Peace.